Y'all familiar with Skip Bayless? I know Alex. I'm very familiar. For sure. Reggie, Skip Bayless is a sports commentator. You know, (laughs) you've heard of Skip. Yes. Is he the mean one? Yeah, a lot Kinda, of people would say yeah. that. Oh, a lot of people about say that. Does he hate on LeBron? Yes, yes. he does. That's him. I Shout do out to LeBron there. who joined us today. If you are watching on YouTube, we have our in-house LeBroni to bring us good luck. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, Skip Bayless. Wait, he's not the one. Oh my god, I don't want to ruin my streak. But is he not the one? Is he the one that's friends with Lil Wayne? Yes, yes. he is. <gasps> yeah, you used to do the yeah, show yeah. with Shannon Sharp. Hey, Come on, Reggie, you yeah. kill you two for two. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm gonna end my streak there. Yeah. Quit while I'm ahead. Okay, what happened? What's up with Skip? He retired, right? He's retired. No, he hasn't retired. Oh. He hasn't retired. Okay. He's been relieved of his duties, which is white man got fired. Fox. Wait, really? Yeah. Yeah, he got relieved from Fox. And oh, they always say that. Shit. And I want y'all to pay attention to this. Just whenever a face. black head coach gets fired, they say, oh, he got fired. Yeah. But whenever it's a white head coach, he was relieved of his duties. It's really crazy. Wait, they, Propaganda, they, whatever the case may be. They didn't say he was fired? Like, they didn't just say it? No. Nah. No, they, they didn't say he got fired. And I don't know, right? Like, I'm just going based off of what some of the other uh, industry insiders say. Right. Marcellus Wiley. Um, who did he do the interview with when I was really... Oh, Dan Lebitard. And Dan Lebitard is somebody who worked in ESP, sports journalist, based in Miami for a really, 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 really long time. The beautiful thing about current media is that we get to see the media hold the media accountable. Right, mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, Marcellus Wiley, uh, former NFL yeah. player, yeah. ESPN personality, yeah. uh, Columbia educated, Ivy League educated, has a really, really done a really, really great job for himself during his career and post the NFL. He reports on some of these things. Uh, but Dan Lebertard interviewed Skip Bayless. Oh, I did see that. Floating did you around. really? Yeah, I did. Dan awesome. Lebertard and. Uh, Marce- um, what's it? Marcellus, Riley? Marcellus, Marcellus Riley. Riley. Yeah, Riley. they have been very vocal about how they feel about ESPN in the last yeah. few years. And I, I love this era of media that we're in where media is holding media accountable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's really prominent in sports. Uh-huh. Um, Cam Newton. Cam Newton is also Fourth somebody. Yeah. Like, um, it's really prominent in sports. And I think in entertainment and hip hop, it's becoming a trend. Like, we have some kind of sub channels who report on it but i think the accountability levels is something that i'm really interested in but when it comes to skip bayless there was a really really dope interview ladies i'm sorry if i'm gonna lose you on this part because i'm talking about sports journalism and shit y'all may not care about but there was an interesting tidbit in that story first off somebody like a skip bayless or Stephen a smith anybody who's just on network tv going back to industry plants they kind of just plant these really talented people in front of us and we just accept them so if you turn on channel two or Fox or CNN, whatever it is, you'll see a news anchor. You'll know nothing about that news anchor, but they were placed there for a reason because they're really good at their job and they can report on the news and they're quick on their feet. For whatever reason, we just get they get placed in these positions and we just accept them because that's what we've been programmed to do. Thanks. Sports analysis have been the same, right? Skip Bayless was one of those reporters who worked his way in the TV, and we just grown to know who Skip Bayless is. But we don't really know who these people are. Like, we don't. So it was really fascinating and really cool to see um, Skip Bayless be interviewed by Dan Lebertard, journalist again. And learning about Skip, Dan Lebertard, he asked about his upbringing, right? Like, again, I've watched Skip most of my life, maybe 15, 20 years I've seen Skip on ESPN and Fox. Yeah. Um, I didn't know Skip Bayless had parents who were alcoholics. I didn't know Skip Bayless um, was basically raised by a black woman um, who was almost like a nanny to his family. I knew and it. he 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 says he gained a lot of respect for, you know, the black plight and, and just the black experience through this woman. Um, something again, I just I just didn't know. Um, I just didn't know his story or his background. But in this interview with Dan Lebertard, Skip kind of gave some insight to who he is and why he is. And the one thing I wanted to bring to this podcast is what he said to his current partner. I don't know if they're married, but I know they've been together for a really long time. Um, on a, on their very first date, Skip told his partner, hey, no matter where this goes between you and I, you are always going to come second. You will never be the main priority in my life because my life's work, my life's passion has been dedicated to my work. Sports, reporting on sports, being in media. Skip is 70 years old. He has millions in the bank. He's accomplished pretty much anything that you can accomplish in his position. He's still like, hey, I'm not retired. 
Mm-hmm. Like he makes it known. I don't ever want to retire. But I just found it interesting and I wanted to just get y'all perspective on that. If somebody were to tell you, no matter what, no matter how deeply you love me, no matter how deeply I love you, Mm -hmm. I'm going to be open, honest, and transparent with you and let you know you will never be the first priority in my life. How do you feel about that? I feel like it is very predictable how I feel about that. (laughs) So (laughs) it's not. Absolutely not. No, that's just, I I, I mean, I don't know him like this i don't i know he doesn't care about me i don't care about him so this is not a shot to skip but like that is not the type of man for me that is not the type of man i could ever picture myself with like for me it's like you i admire career oriented people obviously career driven that's literally how you provide for your family i respect that but it's like that does not come above real life people in your life like your parents me the the mother of your future children like no like that matters to me like Family and real life people, your relationships is like up here for me and your career is like here. Like right. for me, if my husband was like not super career obsessed, like I would not mind. Like it's like, yeah, let's focus on keeping our friendships alive, spending time with our kids like that. I feel like when you're old and gray, like what are you going to do? Brag about your career? Like, no, like do. I don't give a fuck. Do you, re- do you respect his honesty though? For sure. I, res- I respect it, but it's like, I don't care. Like, <laughs> I don't care about his answer. Like, Damn. why okay. do I have to respect it? Like, and just, I that I led with like, oh, I don't even know. Sk-. Like, I, we, like, I don't, he doesn't care about my opinion about him. So it's like, but if this were someone that I was dating and he said that to me, I'll be like, okay, have a nice life. Like, that is just mm-hmm. not, just our, moral, our morals do not align. Like, yeah. I, my parents, like, they definitely put real life first above their careers and just, emphasize how important like family is like all that stuff like i don't know i just don't like the whole my career is everything to me i went through that actually like when i was like in my mid-20s i had like an identity crisis i looked at my instagram i was like every picture is like about my job like i don't care anymore yeah. like who cares about standing next to the celebrity like i don't care like i want people to right. love me for me that's why i rebrand a little bit <laughs> but, Killing a rebrand. but not really like i'm just i was just like let me stop like when I introduce myself to people, like, I don't want my job to be the first thing, like, my identity is. So, yeah. I don't know, Skip. I know Skip probably, he's ha- I don't know if he, he's probably happy with the decisions he made, but that's just, like, not for me at all. Two questions. Is Skip still with her? Yes. Okay. Well, that leads me to my next point. I think everybody is different, and I completely respect where Reggie is coming from. And it makes the most sense, especially for a person who is looking for a life partner for essentially love being the primary thing and the driving factor. However, I'll say this. Low maintenance people might be okay with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's all like what yeah. we picture out of life. Like if he yeah. if his life dream is to be like the president of I don't know, ESPN, whatever, like mm-hmm. president of ESPN, like that brings him so much happiness, then mm-hmm. of course I respect it. But for me, that's not what my idea of happiness is. So right. that's why we're so different, you know. Exactly, right. Like if a person knows that I'm either low maintenance or I'm not. That's how I'd want them to approach me. So if you know I'm a low maintenance person, okay, maybe you show me how you further incorporate me on a day to day basis, week to week basis, etc. But if I know, like, let's say I'm Skip and I tell somebody that, if I know that person is not low maintenance, I would never try that. I would just understand that, hey, it's just gonna have to be at dating, and this probably won't go any further. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so for me, there's another question I'd have to ask, like. I would probably ask, okay, what does it look like for you to love me? Like, how do I know I'm loved by you? Because I think there's more than one way to love somebody. It's not... Different love languages. Yeah. If if someone tells me, hey, like, if I was single and somebody told me, hey, like, you know, you're not going to be number one, you'd be number two, I'd still want to, okay, like, to love me, like, what does that look like for you? Just so I know I'm not out here just... Uh, being unloved by the person that I care about. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I, I have a question, and mm-hmm. it's like, I can't ask if this, so I don't know, like, where this is going to go. But, like, to me, when I hear that, though, like, when we get older, like, if you mean that you're putting your job above me, like, what if I'm, I'm your wife and we have kids and, like, I'm, like, in the hospital or something and I need you? Yeah. And you're like, sorry, you, I told you my career comes first. He goes off to a business trip. Like, how, is that not Dang. crazy? No, sort of crazy. like. You, you want to know what it is, Reggie? I feel like we've seen, like, occurrences of people kind of juggling the both. Like, great example. We talked about LeBron. He's right next to us right now, right? <laughs> LeBron is Mr. <laughs> family. Yeah, yeah. Miss, he's also been very committed to the bas- to basketball. For sure. Mm-hmm. So much so that he still hasn't retired. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or we could kick it to Tom Brady. 
Oh Giselle was like, hey, <laughs> hey. You got one more. Retire. You got one more. Let's get this family going. Tom said, nah. And because she is the type of person she is, she's now having another child with another person. So mm. I don't know. I just feel like everybody's it's just, different. The trainer. It, it's just pain. That's pain. But when I see people like LeBron That's kill it. Pain. He found like the right woman Perfect. to accept that lifestyle. Exactly. You know? I'm so glad you mentioned demanded. Le- I'm, I'm so glad you mentioned LeBron because yeah. the common denominator between both of their stories is the relationship that they had or lack thereof with their fathers. Mm. <sighs> LeBron James has dedicated himself to being a great father because he didn't have a father growing up. That's just, you know, a part of his story. That's some of the things that he said. And you can see it in just how he got his son on the team, right? (laughs) Like, he's going (laughs) to do each and everything to be that father to all of his kids. And from what we see, from what we know, he is a phenomenal father. Mm -hmm. Skip Bayless, again, we don't know these news anchors, these sports analysts, these sports journalists. We know their opinions. We know their ability to report. But we're actually getting to the point in media, in sports media specifically, where we're starting to kind of learn who the people are of this. So with Skip, his desire to win, his desire of never feeling like his his, his winning is, is quenched in a way, right? Right. Is... Because he didn't get the approval or the acknowledgement or the acceptance from his father. And as a 70-year-old man, that still kind of sticks with him where it started out as, hey, I'm really good at this writing journalism stuff because I wasn't good at sports. And he admits to not being really good at sports and all of that stuff. It's a really insightful interview. If you're into sports media the way that I am, please go check it out. But he's like, I just, at the core of it, I wanted my dad i wanted my father to just say yo good job and that's what kind of stemmed from and wow this is a theme of just fatherhood and movies and all of that kind of stuff i didn't even correlate that but that was the theme of skip bayless or that was the root of skip bayless like wanting to be at the top of his profession no matter what until the point now he got married in 2016 he has no kids and he's one of those people who's like, yo. You said this nigga 70? He's 70, yeah. And and uh, he, he, he stood on business. He did. He stood on business when it came to that. <laughs> he, he hasn't had kids. And a part of him not having kids, again, in this interview, is he's like, I am too selfish. At 70, though, you got to let it go. Son. Yeah. You got to just talk to your father from heaven or something. Like, yeah. I'm sorry. Yo. I mean, maybe. You got to let that go. He says, like, all oh, my career comes first. My wife comes second because, like, that's kind of the main thing he lives for. Yeah, but like, see, it's easy to say that in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s. Real talk. 50s. <laughs> you about to get it off. I was about to get it off. Because he said. <laughs> yeah, I ain't, but I wanted to stop right there. But for the most part, yeah. people are considered relatively young in their 20s, 30s, and 40s, for sure, for sure. right? So that's easy to say. Man, when your, your shit not working the same, man, <laughs> when, when you using your wife's insurance because she got better insurance, well, I'm not in Skip's case, of course, mm-hmm. but I'm just, I, yeah, nah, he got the best of the best. I'm just saying, you reach a certain age where you're like, okay. These were my sentiments 30 years ago, 40 years ago, however long it was. But fam, I got about <laughs> 10, 15 more in a, in a can. Yeah. Let's change. It's okay. 